So I have already downloaded the shoe that I'm going to use and I have opened it into Photoshop. Now this is um, your Photoshop workspace. Over here this is your tool panel. Down here this is your layer panel. And up here this is your options bar. We'll be talking about that more. Um, now to when you're working you always want to expand your project so it takes up your whole workspace so the shortcut to do that is command zero on the Mac and control zero on the PC now I am usually working on a Mac computer so I typically will say the shortcut um, command zero so if I say that just know that on the PC it is control zero so I'm gonna do command zero and that's going to fit to screen. So Command-0 is the shortcut to fit to screen. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to go to my first tool, which is the Move tool. And I want to check up here to make sure that this little box has a check mark. This is the Auto Select. So what this will allow me to do is simply click on a piece of the shoe and when I click on a piece of the shoe you will see down here in the bottom right hand corner it will automatically switch to the appropriate layer to which I'm clicking on. Okay so that's a little shortcut so we want to make sure this first tool here is the move tool. Very important to know and we're going to put it on auto select. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use the paint bucket tool and sample a paint color. So, I'm going to start um, with this part of the shoe, which is, if I look in my layer panel right here, they already have it labeled for me. So the whole shoe is already broken down into different layers or different parts. And the only thing that are on these layers are the individual parts of the shoe. Later on, you'll be doing this yourself. Um, so the part I'm going to start with is called the toe box. Now I'm going to go over to my toolbar and I'm going to look for the little paint bucket. Now any tool that has this teeny tiny little triangle in the bottom corner actually has tools hiding underneath of it. So if you click and hold down on that tool, you will find the tools under it. Now, if you can't find the paint bucket tool, it may be because it's hiding under the gradient tool, which we will also play around with today. So I'm going to find my paint bucket tool. And then I'm going to come down here to the bottom of my toolbar. This is my foreground color, the top box, and this is my background color. You've probably also noticed that as you hover over top of the tools, it will tell you what the name of the tool, it, tool is and what it is used for. So here is my foreground color. I'm going to click, and when I click, that will bring up my foreground color picker box. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on the color that I want in my toe box, and then I'm going to click to drop it in. Okay. Now I'm going to continue that same process for a couple other spots. I'm going to do this the same color. Now I'm going to show you how to use the gradient tool. So the gradient tool I'm going to apply in this center piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my move tool, select the center piece. And then I'm going to click and hold down on my paint bucket tool and that will expose the gradient tool. I'm going to select the gradient tool. Now from here it's gonna every time you select a tool it gives you different options for the tool in the options bar so right now I have a linear gradient selected there are five different kinds linear radial angle reflected and diamond which we'll work with more later so for today I'm going to be using the linear gradient and right now it goes from the blue color I have selected to transparent now if you click this drop down and inside these folders there are all different types of gradients to choose from. I'm going to go with one of these. 
You can also customize your own gradient, which we'll get into at some point. Now, once I have my gradient selected, I'm going to click and drag to apply the gradient in my chosen spot of the shoe. If I don't like it, I can always change the color and do it again. Now just a couple more things as you're working. If you do need to step back at any time, um, the history panel is a really good panel to have open. Your history panel and all other panels can be found under your window menu in alphabetical order. Um, if the, the panel has a check by it, it means that the panel is already open. So we're looking for the history panel. Now, if I open up my history panel and pull it down, you can see that it has recorded all my past actions that I've done. So if I just click here, I can step back. And it's a really easy way to kind of try something out and then go back if you're not satisfied with it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this shoe off. Also, if you ever want to sample a color from something, you can use the eyedropper tool and it'll give you a little dropper. You click to sample and then it will show up in your foreground color. Whenever you are done with your shoe, what you're going to do to turn it in is you're always going to flatten it um, because our file size has a lot of layers which makes it a very large file but when we're turning something in we want it to be smaller so I'm going to flatten it which is always at the very bottom of our layer panel so we're going to do layer flatten image and you see it squishes it all together so we're left with just our background image and then I'm going to do file save as you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it Shoe One. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So right now it's a Photoshop file. A PSD is a Photoshop file. You never, ever, ever want to change what is on the right side of the dot. So you only change that by actually going down here to the format and changing the format here. So you're going to go JPEG. Now if you go to this menu and it doesn't have JPEG, you just hit save a copy and then try it again and you should then have JPEG. So JPEG is a standard photo file format um, and this will easily upload into um, the Google Classroom to submit. Always take note to where you're saving it. You always want to save it in one of the D's, downloads, documents, desktop, or drive. And then you hit save. And when this pops up, just go ahead and click OK.